All right, the red areas, let's talk a little bit about the red areas. And you kind of see there's three pockets of red areas. The first one is right in here. So that's kind of hickory between <laughs> Highway 70 and Highland Avenue. That's kind of where that is. In those areas, we've seen a population drop of 10% or more in several of those areas. Uh, second area is around Morganton. And you'll actually see this guy right here, right there. That's kind of downtown Morganton over to, uh, kind of back towards Drexel and Valdez. That's a 13% drop in population. So we know that there's been some areas where people have left, and this, this kind of shows it out. Then we also had some in the rural areas of Caldwell County. We saw some population reductions. And then this one right here, that's uh, downtown Lenore. So the downtown areas, close to the downtown areas of Hickory, Morganton, and Lenore were all impacted by population drops. Where you see growth, kind of down here, shells forward, this ring around Hickory in here. See, like up here, this uh, North Lakes up to Dudley Shoals, that's a 31% increase. So this map kind of tells you where is growth occurring and where is population declines occurring. Any questions about the map? Is there is there a, 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 a income breakdown associated with those areas also? Do you have any information on that? Such as the, the uh, per capita income of that southeast area versus those red areas and such? We're going to talk a little bit about the poverty that's occurring in those okay. areas. Yep. Okay. And, and there's definitely a relationship. Matt will definitely show that. Any other questions? It's like in Alexander County, a lot of the, a lot of the growth is right there in Bethlehem. Right. These two areas here, 12% and 33%. <laughs> this follows Highway 16 between Conover and Taylorsville. So you see pretty good growth there. And then this 12.8% Bethlehem community, those are people that they're working most likely in Hickory, maybe Newton or Conover, and they're commuting from those areas to work in Hickory or Conover. So you can see the relationship between where people are living versus where people are working. And that kind of ties into the, the story, and I, I was on vacation last week, but there was actually a story in the Hickory Daily Record about uh, commuting into the region and people using their cars versus other modes. This would tie into that because these people have to drive to get to work. And these people outside this area, they have to drive in to get to work. And that's why you see that really high driving to work ratio that we have in our region. It's because the population is spread out and they have to use their car to get to work. All right, we'll go on and talk a little bit about um, the ethnicity and Hispanic data that we have from the 2000 census. Got a lot of numbers on this chart, but basically we're talking about what segments of the population have grown over the last 10 years. So the yellow, that's the total population. Go down here and look at Hispanics. That's, that's a huge increase for our area, 13,000 to 23,000 over the past 10 years. Uh, they're still not the largest minority group. We thought they might have become the largest group. They're very close. African Americans are still the largest group, but they were that group was catching up pretty fast, Hispanics. They end up just a little bit short. <coughs> if we took the crystal ball out to the next census, my suspicion is the Hispanic group will be the largest in the next census. Now, when did this growth occur? A lot of it's been, again, that 2000 to 2007. We probably haven't had as much the last couple years. But again, the census is a 10-year snapshot. So we just kind of have to wait to see until it's tallied again in 2020. But that would be uh, my suspicion on that. Uh, let's see. Let's look at some of these other groups. Uh, Asian and Pacific Islander, of course, that's in a region that's mostly Hmong. It's not all Hmong. 
but it's mostly mom. You see an 18% increase in that group. Even though a lot of the uh, migration from Southeast Asia to the U.S. has been cut off in the last 10 years, you're still seeing Hmong from other parts of the country come to our area, and that's what's fueled that increase. Uh, let's see, white, not Hispanic, 9174. So that's, that's another big component of our population growth. And if you look at this next chart here, I decided I would do a breakdown by ethnic group to see where our population growth was coming from. And if you look for our region, and we'll talk about Catawba County in a second, that's your biggest group, Hispanics. Very close behind was white, not Hispanic. It wasn't over 50%, but it was around 40%. And you put the two groups together, they represent about 80% of your population growth. It's a pretty, pretty significant. This is white, non Hispanic. What? Okay. White, non Hispanic. How did we calculate that? Basically, what, what they do on the census is they ask you two questions. And they ask, what is your race? And you can check one or more of those. So let's say they checked white. Then there's another question that says, are you Hispanic or not? So if they checked not Hispanic, when they tally it up, you get white, not Hispanic. Most people that check Hispanic on the census, they actually will check white, and then they check Hispanic. The second most often response is they'll check other race, and then they check Hispanic. Uh, this is an area there's always been lots of confusion about why isn't Hispanic a race, but the Census Bureau looks at it as an ethnic group, and for the last, uh, they kind of started separating in 2000, but the last three or four years, they've actually made two separate questions out of it. So that's why you see white, not Hispanic. And that's why you see not Hispanic on those others either, because I didn't want to double count anybody. So it's kind of, it's one of the strange parts of the census, but maybe it's a federal government thing, I don't know. Yes? Do you have a sense of how much is migration or, or, or in, coming into the community as far as natural births? Okay. I mean, family, right. So it's it's basically how much is natural growth versus in migration, and of course in these two groups it's a mix. But if you looked at it over the past decade, this this group here, this white non-Hispanic, it would be more split evenly between in migration and natural growth. A little bit more in migration than natural growth. The Hispanic group, it's a little bit the opposite. You see more in migration, natural growth is becoming a bigger percentage of it, but it's still relatively small. But I can't say for sure whether it's 60-40 or 70-30, because they don't really ask a question like that on the census short form, but that would be my guess. If you looked at it for the next decade, this will probably be, again, kind of a, a split between the two, in, my, uh, in migration versus natural growth. Hispanic, you would expect to see the natural growth increase a little bit. The only negative against that is U.S. birth rates are kind of declining. People are having fewer children than they had 20, 30 years ago. So that would tend to limit natural growth a little bit. Do you have the demographics of age tied to this? Uh, yes, we're going to talk about that. Uh, that's, that's one part. It, some of the census information still isn't out, but we're starting to get a sense of these groups and the age groups that tie to them, so I'll talk a little bit about that. Any other questions? We'll look at the Catawba County numbers here. They're fairly <coughs> similar. Okay, so we've got 141 to 154 for Catawba County. And if you look at <coughs> the Hispanic, you're going to see... 5,146 increase, so it's 65% increase, so fairly close to what the, the region has. Uh, African American versus Hispanics, a difference of nine. So they're, they're basically the same, about equal. So Catawba County, you would definitely expect Hispanic to be the largest uh, 
minority ethnic group in the next 10 years. There shouldn't be any question about that. <laughs> Let's look at the makeup of the population group like we did with the region. And you'll see it's, it's fairly similar, although the Hispanic is a little bit more. It's more, a little bit over 40%. The white non-Hispanic is only 32% instead of 38, so it's a little bit less. And then um, the other minority groups, African American, Asian, other races, they're a little bit bigger. So that, that's the difference. So you're getting a little bit more diversity coming into Catawba County than the other three. Okay, All right, let's talk a little bit more about Hispanic growth. And this is kind of to keep it in context with what's going on with the other metro areas in the state. First, we had a, a large percentage increase in Hispanics in our area, 66%. But if you look at the other regions in the state, it's actually much smaller than most other areas in the state in terms of percentage. Uh, Jacksonville was the lowest at 64%. But look at the largest, Fayetteville. That's almost a 300% increase. What's going on there? Right. Military. It's clearly military related. Um, Three hundred percent. That's that's a huge increase. Uh, the other one, Wilmington, one hundred and eighty nine percent. Why did that go up? Service, Service and construction. That's right. And Charlotte's one hundred and fifty percent. Nashville's around one hundred and fifty percent. Again, it's construction and service. And of course, a lot of those construction jobs, they've gone away in the last couple of years. So if you look at this for the next decade, you're going to continue to see growth. I'm not so sure you're going to see 200, 300% growth, but you're going to continue to see growth in the next 10 years. A lot of that will depend on how much the economy turns around in the next decade. Of course, we're only in 2011, and nine years is a long way out in terms of looking at the economy. Here's another map, very simple, but looks at Hispanic population concentrations. Uh, Catawba County is in the second darkest green, so that's 7.6 to 10 percent. This is the darkest green in here. It kind of arcs from Charlotte up to Greensboro and Durham, and then it goes down to Onslow County down here. And of course, that's the military base of Jacksonville. So if you look at where Hispanics are concentrating in the state, they're concentrating where there's a military influence, and they're concentrating where you've seen an increase in service jobs and construction jobs. Any questions about that? That's not broken down anyway into uh, illegal immigration? No. Okay. Of course, they don't ask that question on the census. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, however, they, this is a question that I get asked a lot, uh, having to do with, well, did they count illegal immigrants or did they not? The Census Bureau tries to count everybody. When you fill out, this, this was the short form that everybody filled out in 2010. It is supposedly, and I put that in quotes, supposedly 100% count, which means they tried to get a hold of everybody. And we had a really good mail back rate in our area. It was over 80%. So we improved from 2000. They got a really good response. I think the local governments and the public did a really good job filling it out. That other 18%, they try phone calls, they try door to door <coughs> at least six times. So I feel like they got most everybody, but they may have missed a few. They always miss a few. So it's the best count that we have. I guess that's the bottom line, is that everybody, hopefully it's close to everybody. 